segment is Tom Willis. He's running for state senate. He's been on the program uh, before in years past and even during this uh, present campaign. Tom, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Rob. How are you doing? It's, happy it's, April 1st, April Fool's Day. Happy Easter, too, you know. Yeah, happy Easter. Did you, yeah. guys, you have a good weekend? Great weekend. Yeah. Oh, it was marvelous. Had uh, Both my sons were here for, for, sorry, here for dinner, and uh, there's nothing quite like the energy that your children bring to your home, no matter what age they are. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it's just, it's, a, it's something. So it was pleasant. We still have a three-year-old and a six-year-old, so we had a, a full-on Easter egg, Easter egg hunt before church. Oh, very and, nice. Uh, it was great. Yeah. It's nice to be back in a normal campaign setting like this. So one of my friends challenged me to uh, sing at a church in downtown Martinsburg on Friday. And I hadn't done that in a long time. Can I, you sing? Well, not. I mean, it's like, can you play golf? I mean, I can play golf, but you don't want to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> that I understand. I, I used to sing in the in the choir at um, Independent Bible before, you know, my son got things got too busy with my son. But mm -hmm. um, but <clears throat> I've sung before you know, solos. And I find that, uh, it's, it's really, it's one thing to get up and speak in public, but it's a whole different level of fear that you have to overcome to sing, you know, and, and kind of share your heart and express artistically. And so, yeah. um, some friends, it, it was actually a black church downtown, Emmanuel new life, uh, Bible church mm -hmm. and, um, pastor Alex Lambert, great guy, wonderful congregation. And, um, so we went from gospel gospel music, and then I, I you know, it was kind of like er, on the DJ, and I got up and sang um, the Lord's Prayer, so very traditional, classic. But um, they were very kind to me, and uh, and and they they gave me a polite clap at the end. So well, I, I had a Tom, great time, made Tom, some good friends. Good, Tom. I've never been asked to sing solo. I've never never been asked to sing in a choir. Mm. I'm not even asked to sing in a congregation within a church. <laughs> so, <laughs> so my singing is not. Is not like Tom. Bill, someday I'll set aside a whole half hour for you. No, you won't. <laughs> well, Rob's probably singing Italian arias over here. Oh, uh, all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, when you speak in public, you're on your own. But when you sing, you're dependent on who's playing the If you're in church, the piano, the organ. And I felt bad for the, the – we had a younger person, probably in his 20s, singing at our mass – and he and the piano player were not on the same page. Ooh, oh, that's tough. And he got hung up several times. It looked at one point like he was just ready to give up. <laughs> and she was just, she was going to go on with that song. It didn't matter. The it show was, must go on. <laughs> she was rolling the forward. The show must to go on. To your point, when my father-in-law passed away, a friend of mine, Jim Schaffron, who was with the Washington National Opera, he he sang during the funeral and he did the Lord's Prayer. Hmm. <clears throat> he took the roof off, you know, just oh, this yeah. huge baritone, baritone voice. And the funeral director said, would you like the organist to accompany you? And he said, oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> so he just, he did it on his own. Yes, yeah, was, yeah. Uh, it's safer that way. It, it really is. It yeah, really is. Yeah. Wise decision. Let's talk about Tom Willis for Senate. Let's talk about it. The race is going great, guys. I'm, I'm having so much fun. Um, and the support is unbelievable. It's really nice this time. You know, uh, you know I ran for a race before U.S. Senate in 2018, and, and the reception this time, you know, coming in, I think I was considered an outsider before. A relative and, unknown at that time. Most folks were saying, you know, who is this guy? And and um, and we ran because we felt called to run, and, and it's the same reason we're running this time. But uh, the reception has been just great. You know, Hampshire County, Morgan County, um, Berkeley County, and um, people are just coming out of the woodwork supporting us, asking for signs. The, the real difference, too, is that the establishment really – um, you know, is supporting me because they, they know, you know, what my opponent Craig Blair is up to. And, and um, you know, a lot of them are a little intimidated to come out in public and, and challenge him, but they love it when I do and point out, you know, some of the corrupt things that he's been up to. You said establishment. What do you mean by establishment? Tom? Like the, the, uh, the folks that are paying attention to, um, to the race, that pay attention to politics, that show up at the Lincoln dinners and and uh, those sorts of sorts of folks. So those are pretty hardcore or very uh, predictable uh, Republicans. So you're saying that community is shifting over and supporting you? Yeah, <clears throat> establishment is probably a wrong word because Blair's more the establishment guy, the you know the 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 Rhino guy, um, like the 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 the, cons the the true conservative Christian conservative constitutionalists. Um, the Tea Party types, um, the real conservatives, they're the ones that, uh, that are coming over. Like, for instance, the um, uh, We the People, you know, in Jefferson County, it started as a Tea Party organization in 2009. They endorsed me with 86% of the vote. And um, 
Uh, so it's it's folks like that, you know, just the reliable, real conservatives. That yeah. Are. Now, uh, come back a little bit on that. The uh, Tea Party in Jefferson County. Of course, Jefferson County cannot vote for you. Right. Right. So, right. Are you seeing the same? I assume you you feel you receiving you're receiving the same reception in Berkeley, Hardy, Hampshire, Morgan County. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of the a lot of the folks. Um, and that organization are from Berkeley County too, actually. Um, but, and, and obviously they, they can support, but, um, yeah, the, the, the support's been overwhelming. I think there's a, there's kind of a dichotomy, you know, the folks that, um, you know, Blair's been in, in politics for 20 years and, you know, the folks that kind of grew up with him, um, they, they don't realize that, uh, you know, maybe he's come off the rails a little bit as far as the things he's up to right now. And so as, as we educate them on, you know, what he's been up to, you know, things like the, the transgender bill and um you know he's paying himself you know five he on his expense reports he's claiming he's working more than five days a week 52 weeks a year so every week he's working more than five days a week and and uh, milking the west virginia taxpayers and um in hampshire county they're really fired up i don't i don't know if you guys have talked about this on the show um with the uh the railroad the, the south branch valley railroad in um, hampshire county is really fired up because Blair sold that uh, right out from underneath of them, and um, and so they're 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 very angry about that and very receptive to me. We we haven't gone into great detail about that, Tom, and it was a issue I think uh, I don't know three four months ago, maybe longer. Time goes by so quick you lose track. Could you fill us in on that railroad issue? What yeah. the deal was? <clears throat> so so there were a couple of very mysterious things that happened in the in the legislature in in uh, 2023. There was a bill that passed that nobody really paid any attention to, and it gave the West Virginia Department of Transportation the ability to sell off state assets without a bid process. And okay, you know, whatever, but just two, three months later, um, Omnitrax, an out of, out of state, uh, you know, railroad conglomerate, um, signed a deal with West Virginia to purchase the South Branch Valley Railroad. Uh, that's just two or three months after that bill was passed. So that's mysterious in and of itself. And now the the contract is uh, basically it's it was set up as a, a lease but with an option to purchase and um, and so the state could say well you know we're not selling it we're just leasing it. but there's an option to purchase at the end of the lease and effectively that gives you know that's a, it, that's an effective sale because Omnitrax is in the business of buying um, small track railroads and, and operating them and when the uh, town attorney called the state. Well, first of all, there was no notice to the local populace. Um, nobody called, you know, Romney. Nobody called the county commission. The, the only way that anybody found out about this was some of the employees from the Potomac Eagle that were working maintenance ran into some of the state maintenance workers. And the state maintenance workers said, well, you guys know this railroad's getting sold. And then it got back to Potomac Eagle and then it got back to the community. Well, Romney Romney gets 45,000 tourists a year that ride the Potomac Eagle Railroad, and they're largely dependent, their local economy, on those tourist dollars. So this is a big deal, the future of the Potomac Eagle Railroad. Um, and we, we love the Potomac Eagle. Our family's done the Christmas the train ride. It's fantastic. But so, uh, so there, there was no public notice. It was all sort of hush-hush, you know, flying underneath the radar. Well, the, the town attorney for Romney called – the state and said hey we just heard about is this real what's going on you know that was on uh, you know one day i think it was tuesday the next day they get he gets a message from the state be on a zoom call two o'clock tomorrow and um you know you think okay maybe it's going to be some bureaucrat that's been working on this contract with the state who's on the zoom craig blair craig blair's on the zoom call with the secretary of transportation and the uh the tone i talked to the attorney the town attorney that that handled this and uh, he's he's also a Green Beret like me. Uh, he's a couple years behind me, but he's in the same West Virginia National Guard unit, and he's a Green Beret and attorney just like me. So he says uh, he gets on this call. He's surprised to see you know the president of the Senate, Craig Blair, and uh, Blair just lit into him. I mean, he he lit him up. Don't you blank this deal up, 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 up. And um, he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm just trying to get information. We just heard about this. What's going on? And, um, you know, and Blair said, hey, we, we've got this whole thing set up. You better not mess it up. And, um, and so the local attorney, um, good guy, uh, Logan Mance, he, he, uh, so, so the, the mayor 
and the attorney they raised awareness and as it became more and more public you know blair quickly faded you know into the background and started pushing the attorney for the department of transportation up front um and so this you know th this just got railroaded through and, and there was no bid no auction no public notice and i know for a fact because i've, I've talked to several people in romney there are people in Romney who would have liked the opportunity to purchase that railroad. And the other thing is the Potomac Eagle, you know, a huge pillar of the economy over there, they have to make long-term investment decisions on, on uh, capital improvements and that sort of thing. Well now, you know, and, and they, were, they were looking at, you know, millions in improvements because their business is growing, tourists are coming. Now they can't, they can't decide to invest in West Virginia because they don't know, you know, this is a primarily a freight company and they're operating a tourist railroad um, and then this is the last thing I'll say about it, but, you know, Blair wrote an op-ed piece defending himself in the Hampshire Review. And in that piece, he says, don't worry, guys, there's a 30-day right to cancel. Um, and this is typical Craig Blair bait and switch. Um, I mean, he's either not intelligent or he's lying because in the contract, in, you know, mind you, I, I do 40, you know, I do 40, 130 page contracts every week. So I'm good at reading these things. It's, it took me about, you know, three minutes to realize in the contract that 30-day escape clause is a lie because it says if you exercise this 30-day escape clause, Omnitrax has the right to immediately purchase the railroad. Are you making an accusation of criminal wrongdoing here? I, I think there. I'm not making an accusation of criminal wrongdoing, but I'm making an accusation of corruption. Okay, mm -hmm. so Craig Craig Blair is corrupt. Yes, in my opinion, he is corrupt. Okay. Um, in, I've just read the, the coverage here of the Metro, New, Metro, Metro News coverage of your debate the, over the weekend, I presume. Yep. Last, All right. Last this, Tuesday. Last this Tuesday. Is, you were quoted as saying, I really didn't intend to run, but my friends called me and explained to me what the Senate president is doing, including voting for allowing chemical castration for minors. Is that a true statement? Yeah, absolutely. 100% true that Craig Blair is for the chemical castration of minors. Well, 100 percent true. Well, what you the way you read it, right? Craig Blair your voted to allow. Read it again. Including voting for allowing chemical castration for minors. Yeah, that's 100 percent true. There that's was 100 percent true. Was there also a bill? There was a, that clean, was, there was a clean bill that came over from the House, HB 2007, that uh, that prevented surgeries for gender confused minors. Does that and it bill, also prevented chemical castration for gender confused minors? Isn't there also a bill? And because that of lobbyist, let me finish. Well, okay. Because of lobbyist dollars. Uh, you don't. And pressure from the left, Craig Blair caved, and, and they put the Takubo Amendment back in to allow chemical castration for minors, and Blair voted for that. So that's 100% accurate. I, I get that you want to spin this, but the reality is, is there not a bill in existence that does, that does not allow gender surgery for minors? Gen did that bill not pass? That it forbids... What I, what I was talking about... I, could you just answer my question? I'm isn't there a question? Isn't there the, the 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 gender surgery for minors has been banned, right? Gender ca chemical castration was under, voted for by Craig Blair. Under what and circumstance? Under what circumstance? And here's the here's under the what thing. circumstances? And, and Blair said this during the debate. I'm, you know, I'm worried about kids killing themselves. Here's the thing. You're not worried about kids killing themselves? Well, listen. Ninety percent of gender confused minors. This is a this is a real stat. Ninety percent of of People under age 18 who are gender confused and think they might be the other gender, when they're left alone, 90% self-correct within a few years. And here's the thing, John: we we're up against we're up against the enemy of our souls, right? And his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. How better to accomplish that than if I can if I can sterilize a minor? They can never reproduce. They can never have kids. I can if I'm the enemy of, of your soul, I can kill generations into the future. And that's what that bill accomplished. See, Tom, this is what, you know, I'm, I'm just a voter. I'm not a politician. I just, I make stuff up for a living. But this is the stuff that as a voter drives me crazy. It's the truthiness of it. What, what, when you say in your quote that, that um, Craig Blair is for the chem, chemical castration of minors, when in fact. I said he voted he does, for it. He it, voted for it. Again, you, know, you, you, can, you can mince words and you can parse words to create an image that is largely false. But that's a fact. It would be he equal, voted for it. That, it that's would be a fact. E it would be equally true under your rules. It would be equally true for him to say that Tom Willis is in favor of confused children to commit suicide. I never voted for that. If, if you're criticizing him for, I, for voting for the application of drugs to be given to confused children under the, the minimum dosage that would be given to... Uh, 
uh, allow minors going through gender dysphoria to be treated with, with minimum dosage if they are at risk of hurting themselves or others. That is the single exclusion. And you're calling that being in favor of chemical castration. You can't tell me that that's not at best truthiness and at worst a lie. Well, I, the quote that you gave was that he voted it's your for that. your quote. I didn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I stand by it. He, okay. He voted. To, and here's the thing. He, if that's he your receives, standard. He receives a lot of money from pharmaceutical companies, lobbyists. He receives money from the West Virginia University Health System, which profits off this. Look, I, I think we need to protect West Virginia minors, right? They, can't enter to, they cannot enter into a contract. They can't buy a car. But we can let them destroy the rest of their lives with because they're confused for a little bit. If their doctor says, if we leave them alone, ninety percent self-correct. Aren't aren't isn't isn't their pediatrician more qualified than a lawyer who's a part-time politician? Okay, well, I mean, if that's the case, then we could say, hey, twelve-year-old, uh, go get an attorney, and if you think you're qualified, you can get married or you can buy a car at age eleven. I mean, we what we have marriage? we have an obligation to protect our minors. Now, when you get to age eighteen. You want to have surgery? You want to take all the chemicals you want? Take them. But I, I feel like as a man, we have a duty to protect the weak. And this is a moral issue, right? We're, we're going to be accountable to God. Did you protect the the weak and, and the, the, the vulnerable in your society? It used to be. All I'm saying is wait till age 18, and then you can do whatever you want. It used to be that the Republican Party wanted to keep government out of people's lives. And it seems to me that the new version of the Republican Party wants nothing more than to get into people's lives and tell them how to do it under the guise of godliness. And it just, I don't understand it. That's, that's the point I want to make. And, it's, and you're, 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 you're wrapping what, what you present as truth, and I'm just saying it's, it's not truth. And if, if you're willing to call this chemical castration, which is not at all what's represented here, and how does that, if, if that's your version of the truth, then how can we really believe anything else you're saying as the truth? Well, tell me, what do you think is the truth here, John? Tell well, me what's, what's the truth. Because I, I think there is an objective if you were in reality a that is truth. If you were in a courtroom. Right. And you talked about this conversation with, and I won't get all the details, the first time I'm hearing it, right, about, about the, the, the railroad. Mm-hmm. You talk to a guy who heard a guy who said about the thing and that they were angry. And you know people who talk to people who did the thing. That's, it, and you call that firsthand knowledge. It's not firsthand knowledge. It's hearsay at best. It's thirdhand knowledge at best. But you're presenting it as, you know, it, the, the only thing that was firsthand in what you said was your reading of, of, of the contract. But everything else was, it, it's, it's, all, it's all political sleight of hand. No, I, 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 I quoted the newspaper article that Blair wrote where he lied about the 30-day get-out-of-jail-free, right? Uh, I read the contract. I talked to the town attorney. I talked to the mayor. I talked to many concerned citizens. That's firsthand knowledge. And you realize I'm a litigator, right? So you're lecturing me on evidentiary rules, and I've passed the bar in several states. That's a little absurd. I, I, look, you said, I said in the debate, Craig Blair voted to allow chemical castration for minors, and he did. That's a fact. That's the truth. That is a reality. That is an objective reality, truth, fact statement. Craig Blair did not protect our minors, and I think we have a moral obligation to do so. And there are other issues in this campaign. Bill, we've got time for one more question. Go ahead and shift. Uh, Tom, obviously you're running against an individual well-known, uh, and he, he makes the argument he's in a position of doing good things for the Eastern Panhandle. Uh, how... How confident are you that you're going to be a serious contender for this race? I think I think I'm going to win this race. I really do. Um, we, we've got a strong momentum going, um, and and I hear that a lot. Um, and it's just it's, it's just a matter of education, right? We're we're racing against the clock. The votes on May 14th. Vote Tom Willis on May 14th, by the way. But th- I hear that. Hey, he's you know Craig Blair's a Senate president. He's Republican. So why should we you know why should we change? And um, I I don't think Craig Blair has been president. I mean, present. I don't think he has been present in the Eastern Panhandle. I've heard a lot of folks, um, you know, not 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 even at the further out counties, but in Berkeley County saying we never see that guy, you know, let alone, you know, start getting out away from uh, Martinsburg. Um, And then we got into this on the debate, too, on Tuesday. You know, he's very fond of saying what's good for the rest of West Virginia is good for the Eastern Panhandle. 
And he said, no, 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 that's not what I said. He said, what's good for the Western Virginia, what's good for the rest of West Virginia is great for the Eastern Panhandle. And I say, no, 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 that's nonsense. What's good for the, what's good for the Eastern Panhandle is good for the Eastern Panhandle. You know, that's what Tom Willis says. So I'm focused on the Eastern Panhandle and being present and, and governing with integrity and certainly not claiming, you know, more than five plus duty days every day of the week, 52 weeks a year. Have there been any polls conducted that you know of? So there were some polls last fall, and I was a very favorable position at that point. I haven't heard of one um, this spring, but honestly, you know, Blair's much, much more well-funded than I am, and um, that tells me he's probably run polls and, and is afraid to publish them. Um, I know one organization was getting ready to run one last week, but recently they changed the rules, and now they've got to recock their whole system because you have to give an opt-out um, option when you do a poll now. And so the rules have changed, so everybody's kind of readapting to – to run the polls that they used to run more easily. Tom, we're just about out of time. How can people find out more about your campaign for Senate? Well, I appreciate you guys having me on. Um, TomWillis.com is my website. Um, there's, you know, my bio, my my stance on all the different positions is on there, TomWillis.com. And I'm asking for the vote from all the voters. Please vote for me, Tom Willis, on May 14th. And uh, appreciate the, the, the uh, vigorous debate, John. <laughs> And uh, Bill, thanks for having me on, Rob. Always a pleasure. And April 17th, we'll be featuring the Senate candidates at our forum, which will be uh, taking place at uh, 8 o'clock with the Senate candidates at the Berkeley County Commission Chamber meeting room on the second floor. And you'll be there, as will Craig Blair and Mike Folk, too. Lord willing, we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. We don't know about tomorrow, do we? Not guaranteed. Thanks, Tom. Tom, thank you very much. Thanks, guys.